Hello, everybody. I'm Donnie Hillier from the heavy metal band Trauma. We are sitting on the front porch of the Boardwalk in Orangevale, California, right outside of Sacramento. And I am talking to Zarin from Capital Chaos TV. I Um, more, more, um, just, uh, friends and, uh, garage band kind of things, you know, um, playing some songs, sounding horrible, thinking sounded great and little by little, um, learning how much I enjoyed doing it and, uh, that I wanted to, um, be increasingly serious about it and finding other people that had that level of interest because, you know, the friends that I started out playing music with weren't. It was more just, you know, a hobby or something to do for fun. I, I, how did I become a singer and what else do I play? I play a little bit of guitar, um, basic chords, no soloing, uh, and that's just for songwriting purposes for myself. But basically, I'm a singer. I um, at one time played some some um, blues harp, um, but I've never incorporated that into a heavy metal style, and I haven't played any for quite some time. The question was, did I go to church as a youth? I did go to uh, church with my parents for a few years, and then I had an option of going to Sunday morning services or belonging to a church youth group, and I opted for the church youth group group because it was a heck of a lot more fun than sitting in the sanctuary uh, listening to the minister. Uh, I, I was never very serious about it. I would have preferred to stay home. The question is, how did I meet Cliff Burton? And was there any magic there or was he just another guy? Uh, I met Cliff Burton through, um, through, at that time, one of the founders of of trauma and I was the the new guy um, they had the other four musicians had been playing and jamming with each other for a while I'm not sure how long I first met Cliff when he walked into my apartment in Oakland with the other four members of trauma um, a couple of the band members had seen me playing in a in a nightclub in Hayward singing in a nightclub uh, with a band that I wasn't that serious about, but um, but was you know kind of feeling the lay of the land. And Mike Overton um, from the band told me that he had a heavy metal band named Trauma. Would I be interested in checking them out? I was very interested in it. I immediately liked Mike, and so within a few days, Mike and the other three members of the band came to visit me at my apartment in Oakland to talk about me joining the band. And um, and I remember Cliff walking in the door of my apartment, and uh, yeah, the Cliff that a lot of people know: long red hair, jean jacket, Levi bell bottoms, and uh, you know just just the um, the iconic look that he's that he always had uh, so I liked all of the members of trauma immediately and and within a few days after that we were jamming and I was starting to learn uh, some of the songs that they had already been working on and I started working on lyrics quit the other band and and yeah trauma's been my band since um, was there any magic yeah, there was definitely magic on stage. Um, anybody who is a fan of Metallica or Cliffs knows that he uh, was an iconic bass player and a great influence for generations of bass players and musicians. And uh, he was just a fantastic musician and a terrific person to be around. In 2017, um, how, do I, how do I describe trauma? And I guess musically speaking, um, it's uh, it's still it's still very much the classic heavy metal sound, 
Um, and but there's sort of there's a modern twist to the songs now. The songs are, are a little more complex, and um, we're still a heavy metal band and um, melodic. Uh, melody is important to us, and we're just uh, you know kind of a mix of the old sound with with the new sound. Um, Back back in the day, the local scene was very exciting. Uh, looking back in history, you can see that it, it was a scene at the time. It was a lot of bands just making some really, really interesting music. Um, it was early days of heavy metal. The influences are the same influences that I love today because they were they were that powerful. They were. Um, such great musicians and songwriters and such talented bands and that would be um, Dio and Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and um, you the listener kind of knows what genre I'm talking about and to this day I still love those bands more than most and uh, they were they were the formative bands um, I'll go back a little bit earlier and and throw Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin in there. And all the members of this, this current trauma lineup would agree that those were great influences of theirs. Of course, um, having the connection with Cliff, um, you know, we, we followed Metallica and love what they've done in their career. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's this, the longevity of those fantastic classic metal bands that made the genre, um, you know, uh, what it is, what it is and has been. Very stable. Um, we have, uh, let's see, Steve um, Ribello, one of the guitarists, has been with the band um, for a few years now. He actually filled in for our um, former bass player who had passport problems when we went over to Germany. Steve actually, with about three rehearsals, played bass, um, and then uh, now is on his his you know preferential instrument, which is guitar. Um, Joe Frolub has been in the band for about a year now, and um, Joe is. Also, one of the main songwriters and uh, engineer and producers on an album that we are, are about completed on. Um, there, there are just a few more, maybe one song that needs bass lines, a few lead solos, and a few vocal tracks that need to be done. But Joe has been spending hours as the engineer, main producer. Uh, he's sharing... Um, engineer duties with Juan Ortega from um, Trident Studios down in um, Martinez and Juan is world famous as a uh, metal producer and engineer so it's very stable the band is um, we have management now we have international uh, agency working with us and um, some dates that we'll be announcing pretty soon so it's things are going really well Greg is, is a fantastic bass player. I, I, I often see um, fans of his, and he has very, some very devoted fans describe him as a world-class bass player, um, which he is, and um, very comparable. I mean, it's, it's fantastic to have him in the band. It's been a real lift for our music, and uh, the rhythm section is, is, um, is a really, a, really a rock foundation now. Um, the question is, uh, what, what were some of the highlights of playing on the 70,000 tons of metal? Um, it was a fantastic time. We, uh, every band plays two shows, and um, the fans are fantastic. You know, you, you're walking down the hallways or in the elevators or, or in the restaurants, and, you know, people come up and talk to you. They want their picture taken with you, and it's just metal fans are just so cool it's like um we kept hearing from the staff on the on the ship because we would we would have conversations with them that it's their favorite week um it i mean I, that's if i'm not mistaken that's a royal um caribbean line and so we're talking a major 
you know, a major luxury um, tourist line. And so those boats are going year round. And, and so out of 52 weeks, the crew loves the 70,000 tons the most because they have the most fun with the fans and, and their passengers. And, you know, they're not listening to elevator music or watching, you know, really lame shows in the theaters and all that. It's metal. And uh, it's just great interaction. It's, it's a, the vibe is fantastic. And there are so many fans that will tell you uh, they save up their money to go there. And they're going year after year because, you know, it's, it's the ultimate for them. Uh, the, you know, every, uh, they're rubbing elbows with the musicians and vice versa. And so we had a blast. It's, it's been one of the highlights of my life. Yeah, um, we're playing tonight here at the Boardwalk in Orangeville, California, and we're playing a number of songs from the Scratch and Scream album, about three songs from the Rapture and Wrath album, which uh, was released in 2015, and we're also playing three brand new songs, um, one of which is The Rage, which has been out on the internet since June, uh, and I'm not... I. Yeah, on, on some of the um, online music um, music uh, websites. So it'll be a mix tonight, but yes, our album is almost finished and will be released in, I'm going to guess, early 2018. Sometimes things take a little longer than you think. The question is, uh, album name? Not decided yet. It may be called As the World Dies. That's one of the um, s signature songs on the album. Um, other names of songs would be Gun to Your Head, which we're playing tonight. The Rage, which I just mentioned. As the World Dies are the three we're playing tonight. Um, there's also um, Last Rites. Uh, yeah, it's just... A number, um, probably about 10 songs. We've actually recorded more songs than we'll need for the album. Always, um, always, you know, uh, I kind of have an attitude and some other members of the band have an attitude about that 1% that's out there. And uh, don't particularly care to see people living in the quote rigged society and um, so there's there's always plenty plenty to uh to write about sing about complain about as far as uh do i read any books um i've read the uh game of thrones series and uh and yeah, i'm definitely a fan of of all of that genre waiting for the for the last book to come out heavy metal to me what does heavy metal mean to me um one of the things I love most in life, um, the music, uh, it just, it just uh, makes me feel alive. The, the bombast, the, uh, the passion, the power of it. Um, I'm so addicted to, to metal music that um, it means a lot to me. The, uh, the brotherhood of the fans, the brotherhood of musicians, it's, uh, it's a way of life. And, uh, and thank God we have it.